everybody, what is going on? It is Dunbar Snack Bar. I'm playing Arma 3 with the 183rd Air Assault Milsim unit. Every single video that you have seen up to this point has been in preparation for this moment. Because as of right now, we're on deployment participating in Operation Cold Winter. Now the story for this goes that Ukraine has suffered a number of terrorist attacks at the hands of terrorists who swear allegiance to ISIS. The Ukrainian government has requested assistance from the United States to be able to help drive these terrorists out and to also drive out any other forces that might have loyalty to ISIS. So what we're doing is we have dropped into this area and we are constructing a forward operating base known as FOB Jackal, which we'll be using for missions down the road. But it doesn't take too long for the enemy to know that we're here and to mount an attack against us. You don't want me to keep building? User disconnected from your channel. I think this one is uh, full. Hey, King. Hey, Andrew, if you have eyes on enemies, you're clear to engage. Make sure you PID that they are enemies first. Over. I'm no quick. King, get on your job now. Watch out, wall coming in. So we've been tasked to move to the south, enter the wooded area, and help provide security for HQ and other members of the 183rd as they continue to set up FOB Jackal. But I did want to tell you, the viewer, real quick about what deployment means for this group, for me, and also ultimately for you as the viewer. So those of you who have seen my Resolute Alliance campaign know full well that it's all based around cause and effect. What happens in one mission, whether good or bad, is going to affect the next mission and that's what holds true in this deployment phase as well this is one giant story that's taking place so for example if we don't get fob jackal set up then we're gonna have to do this all again somewhere else so we don't want to fail at anything that we're doing and there's a lot more that happens behind the scenes too that you guys don't see as the viewer but is influenced by other people's actions for example the day before we have uh, our main missions on deployment 
the air unit will go do reconnaissance over where we expect to be engaging the enemy next to help give us insight into what's going on. If they lose a helicopter while they're providing reconnaissance or you know, a fast mover, whatever it may be, that is docked from the amount that we have available. So we have to be careful when it comes to the air units. Even the magazines that we expend as we're engaging the enemy is taken into effect. You know, if I'm being an AR and I go through two belts, then those two are deducted from what's available for everybody else. So we have to conserve ammunition. There's a lot more pressure on what's going on and we ultimately take things more seriously, which I kind of like that. So to get back here to what's going on in this mission, since you guys are now fully aware of what deployment means for us and what you're going to be seeing, we have made it into the woods. You can see there's a lot of fire that's already starting to take place and we start to see the enemy come up over the hill in our direction. These choppers that are coming in are the lifeline of the 183rd at this point. If for some reason something happens where these choppers can't come in or leave, then we don't have a way to be resupplied, we don't have a way to build FOB Jackal, and in a worst case scenario, we don't have a way to get out. And so I'm watching over to the west while most of my team looks to the south. It makes sense since the south was the direction that most of the enemy have come from. I just want to make sure that in the route that the choppers are trying to come in, it's free of any enemies. Fortunately for me, I also have an attack chopper right above that hill that I'm kind of looking at right now and they spot a lot of enemy and are able to take them out before anything happens. And so for me, the rest of the night is pretty quiet. The morning on the other hand is a different story. For this mission, we're going to be going to a nearby village to let the locals and the enemy know that we didn't get pushed out in the night, that we are here and that we are here to stay. Now, the village is some way out from our FOB, and so we're going to have to travel quite a bit on foot. One of the things along the way, though, is a large valley that we're going to have to cross into. If we were the ones who were defending this area, we would think it's a great place to ambush the enemy. Therefore, we're preparing for the exact same thing. Now, as we head into this valley, everybody's heads are on swivels. We're all making sure that we're checking our sectors because we know... This is likely where we are going to be hit. And, as we expected, we get hit pretty quick. You're ready for the fucking ambush. Uh -huh. Oh, 
called it. Down, get down. Contact south. Pull back to the north, pull back to the north, let's go. That's 203. Pull back to the north, pull back to the north. Devin needs to find him. Right here, right here, Cargi, right here. Right here, right here, right here. Anybody what's up, what's up, what's up? Anybody hit? Here. All right, spread, spread out, spread out, spread out, spread out. He's on 4 0 on that additional radio. Gotcha, gotcha. Anybody um, hit? At this time on Should we get him to frame around to the right here, Devin? Yeah. Uh, No, 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 we need a hole here. We need to find out where 1 1 is, though. Well, I think they're just up on the hill there. One one, I got position on your target. Be advised, this is Nightmare Six One checking in over. Roger that. Eight firm, little pain. Uh, I gotta get hey, you on some nightmare. Got it. Got it. Got it. The goal to not get hit. One one, where you guys at? Hey, uh, Raz, you should uh, see about getting permission to uh, flank from the southwest. Just throw out hold the one, hold on. I don't have any more white, you out of luck. You need white. I got one. On four. I threw one white already. I'm out far, throw him out far. That's it, that's all I've got. I got some M203s, but they're different. Alright, throw in another smoke. I still got a lot of smoke left. I still got two more, I think. Varying colors, though. Alright, well, well, we got some uh, smoke cover if y'all can make it across. I'm sure you can imagine that at this point, I'm feeling terrible. I'm hearing that other members of the 183rd are getting hit pretty hard by the enemy, and me and my fire team just can't even see where the enemy is. Sure, we've got a general idea, and if this was a different situation, I would be pushing forward and laying down suppressing fire in the general direction of the enemy, hoping to get maybe one or two lucky shots in there, but I've got to think big picture. Now, the overall objective for this mission, remember, is to make it to the town and to then make it back to FOB Jackal. I know this is not going to be the only engagement that we're going to be participating in. Right now, the enemy have been relatively untouched by our forces, and they have a heavy presence in the area. So, I don't want to be wasting any ammunition at this point, knowing full well that I've got a long road ahead of me. I mean, there's even more big picture stuff, too, when you consider that every belt counts. But fortunately, Anvil comes in and helps suppress the enemy, takes a lot of them out, and we're instructed to stay in the tree line and head north a little bit to see if we can get a better vantage point on the remaining enemy forces. It doesn't take long, though, for me and my fire team to get eyes on something, but we're unsure if it's enemy. Uh, I got cell phone. <laughs> Thanks, Brad. What site does he have? What? What oh. site does he have? Oh, what was that? I have no clue. In front of the shot, was that enemy? Wait, what? Friendlies in the tree line. 
User joined your channel. User left That's your channel. Over there, but I don't know where they're getting shot at from. I go again. Uh, there's contact halfway up the hill, uh, from south south east or Roger, south southwest. User joined your channel. Hey, cover me. Cover me, right yeah. now. Yeah, are we allowed to shoot at the bad guys? What's bearing? Does anybody got a bearing on them? 190 is where they're at, halfway up the hill. It's movement anyway, I haven't been able to ID for sure. I'm trying to track them, I just don't see anybody. So I take it we're not allowed to shoot. Not unless we get a positive ID. That's easy. They're on the side that we were getting shot from. Yeah, that guy that I just got, where'd he go? He said he was HQ. That's true, but we're not, we're not taking contact. We're not, huh? No, we're not. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure those shots were hit to my left. Hindsight is 2020, and even though it contributed to me and my fire team not playing a major role in this engagement, I still think not firing at that movement on the hill was the correct decision. When you're presented with the facts of, you know that there are friendlies in a general direction, but you don't know exactly where they are, of course the best thing to do is to not open fire on anything unless you're 100% sure you're firing at the enemy. And to be honest, I was not 100% sure that that was enemy. If you think about it, if it was a friendly force, that could be catastrophic, not just for that unit, but also for our overall mission. And to be frank, It'd be pretty bad for me, too, if I opened fire on friendly forces. So we move farther to the left in hopes to get our first good look at the enemy. I'll be honest, we don't get a good look at the enemy. Things come down pretty quick, and our fire team is taken over by Skriggs. We're on the move towards the city, but it doesn't take long for us to spot an IED. Both squads, push back, push back. Alright, push back, guys. Go back got a possible ID on the road. Let's get Where's uh, that two at? giant lions on the death ledge. Giant lions on the death ledge. Some two giant guys. Alright, he wants to get two lions in the death ledge over here. Kind of Pulling <laughs> back. Pull back over here to the lake, guys, to the east. Where you want, bro? Uh, it is northeast. Ask this guy if you want to fire two or three on. Yeah, yeah. I want you guys to make a line. User left your channel. Yeah, I think you can hit with two or three. Hey, who's got two or three? Raz has a 203 right How now. How far up do they want us? A little bit to the right. They went where I'm trying to go right score here. again, dude. Can I go swimming? Be spread out. Just keep spread out. Kang, I heard him at. Where he at? Here, right here, right here. Oh, what's up, Scrooge? What's up? If you guys got a range, that means. Evan's over here. I'll tell you later. <laughs> Wayne. Alright, everybody get down, everybody get down. Good spot. 
I see that success. Who shot that to him? Was that you, Raz? That was me, Mitch. Good job, boy. That was perfect. Nitch made our fire team proud. Destroy that IED with one shot from his 203. But that celebration quickly dies down as we're moving towards the town once again, knowing full well that there is a lot of danger that lies ahead of us. We do know that there are a lot of civilians in the area. They could have suicide vests. There could be more IEDs. They could open fire on us. There's just a lot of potential hazards that could lie ahead, and we're not going to have that much time to be able to react to anything. This is a very close quarters situation. So as we move close to the town, we're looking very closely at the civilians, and those ahead of me quickly see a civilian that looks very, very suspicious. If it shows any hostile threats to him, we're going to take him down, if possible, capture. All right, guys, we got a guy, a civilian on the right side of the road with a handgun. He shot Shots. clear fire, clear fire. Yeah, he just shot at us. You good, Scriggs? Yeah, get down, get down. Yeah, fire cover, fire cover. Alright, Alpha, break to the greenhouse on the left. Uh, Bravo, break to that little hill on the right side. Alright, guys, break to the greenhouse over here. Right, I'm hearing right, Russian. We went very slow and cautiously through the town, and there were a lot of suspicious civilians. I'm happy to say, though, that there was only one hostile civilian. As you saw, we took him down really quick. So right now, we're on the move, having just left town, and we're headed back towards our forward operating base. Up ahead is a damaged vehicle that had an IED in it. Fortunately, one of the members of the 183rd in front of us spotted it and made sure that it was detonated before it could harm anybody. Now, I feel like things have been quiet a little too long, and it seems like my intuition is right as we soon spot some enemies. Get down, guys. Possible contacts. Contact where? Left side of the road into this depression over here. All right, guys, we're gonna move far left over here to this uh, little crazy these two trees and this big tall white tree. It's all behind that hill. How much you wanna bet they're gonna have us push up on the hill? I wish they would have us do it already. You don't look very comfy. Let us do our jobs. Joe, what are you doing? Nap. <laughs> Contact. Right to the right. Over here. Over there. Over there. Hold fire, guys. Hold fire. Hold fire. What did you say? Risk. <laughs> I was just seeing if the IED was related to this ambush, which it seems like it was. How do you tell? It's not that we can tell. It's just we can put two and two together. The IED went off and then we got ambushed. Will work. And this gets is crazy. Right. Uh, I think I think we may have lost the. Yeah. Be advised, there is a friendly, I mean enemy, I mean enemy, a civilian priest at about 250 in the woods. Hey, one, hey, one, three. I want you pushing up to that barn right now. Oh, you want some help? Yeah, push up, push up with him, Smith. You know where he's at. Go, go. go. 
Make sure you got your earplugs in, guys. One three push up now. Yeah, I have contact to the southeast. Right. Roughly uh, 500 meters. Uh, uh, 500. Briggs, I need you and the other team of 1 3 to push up to that barn now. Alright, alright, guys, we, we're pushing up to the barn. 1 1, hold this road. 1 1, push up to where the uh, the burnt truck is. Double time it, double time it. Probably got contact to the west, guys. Yo, what's up? They're pushing up to the barn, we're clearing it out. Alright, this number 1-3, McBride, can you hear again? Alright guys, we're speaking around the right hand side. We're gonna get up here and rest, I know you guys are tired as I am. Get a perimeter up and get rest a little bit, and then we'll move. It. Guns up, guns up. Down. Was that Anvil? Damn, that is Anvil. Yeah, I think it was. Alright, be advised, you're pulling back down, pulling back down. Alright, guys, they want us to pull back down now. Oh my god. Double back, let's double back. We didn't get to shoot one. anything. Yeah. We were fucking hamsters. We went in here to see if we got shot at. This is guinea pigs. Yeah. Alright, we're heading back down now. Hey, we got shot south. Let's go back him up. Roger, uh, one of the teams up here wanted to take a shot. We're gonna go back him up. Anvil up there? That's it. Anvil blown up. Anvil is on top of that hill right there. It's still about Anvil's there. Anvil's right here, behind that gate. Oh, Eliza, that's the tank. Uh, They're uh, alive. Uh, Anvil's right let's, let's go rescue Anvil. Anvil. Contact to the south. Hey, beware, shot comes in six and stick and six. I've been hit. Who's that? Who's that? Badinsky, contact to the south. Right. South hill, south hill. Good deal. No, we're up here on right Mark with red smoke. I'm not gonna move. We're south east of the barn. Briggs, let's flank them from the west. We go around and use this. Jose, are you good? Uh, Roger, I'm getting treated right now. Roger that. You got a medic over there? I got a medic. 
Hey, I need my medic over here. Where you at? Over here treating somebody. What's up? I should done with him. Move over to Angel. Angel needs to Alright, roger that. What kind of injury do they got? Roger that. He's bandaging somebody up right now. He's about to come to you. Is uh, yeah, their injury fucking line. priority? Yeah, back up over to the back of this hill or somewhere. Hey, hold where y'all are at right now. Alright, dude, you should be good. Oh! Okay. Hey, Fowler. Get Bradley, bro. Up. I'm coming. I'm up. You do it so well. I'm not worried about bleeding. I'm pissed off these oh, fucking shit. Captain Bradley. Snack bar got hit. Who's hit? Who's hit? Snack bar. Snack bar's patched up. Uh, what's you, what's you guys did, rep? Oh, uh, we're alive. Oh. Oh. Oh, oh, I just hit my shrapnel. No. This is 1 3, go ahead. Roger that. We got a few Be advised, that got we are pulling back building. off this hill into cover inside the buildings. We're pulling off the hill into the buildings. Looks like we're pulling off the hill, guys, into cover. We're gonna pull back into the cell, uh, the two-story green roof, uh, white building. Our push to rescue Anvil was a success, and we were able to bring them back safely to the unit. In the process of us doing that, it felt like we were playing a game of whack-a-mole with the enemy. They just kept popping up out of nowhere. However, me and my team were able to successfully take out any enemy that we saw very quickly. We were wounded, I was wounded twice, I was shot once, and I received shrapnel from a mortar. 
Another one of my fire team members though has some broken legs and won't be able to run. But luckily, I was quickly patched up. Uh, 250 yeah, milliliters of blood it. in the right leg, snack bar. I'll give you some morphine if you need it. All right, thanks, dude. All right, come over here. Okay, listen up, guys. The bomb Just keep is moving, bearing... keep moving. Let's go, let's go, let's go. The bomb is bearing 330. We're bearing 330. Red on your fire team, so let's get moving. So morphine, need... right leg. Hold on, snack bar. All right, thanks, Dunn. Are we taking the route or are we heading straight back? Alright guys, we're moving back to the road, moving back to the road. User joined your channel. Done. You should be good. Have I ever told you what good work you do? Oh, you're a nice guy. That's 300, dude. Okay. You the man. It was only after I left the barn that I realized I was among one of the lucky ones in the unit. I was surprised to see how many people were wounded. People were being carried. There were others who were walking because their legs were broken and couldn't run. From what I could see, it seemed like we were beat up pretty bad. The original plan for this mission called for us to march into the town and for us to march back to our forward operating base, FOB Jackal. Now, it looks like that's not going to be an option for us. We also can't use Anvil to be able to transport the people who can't run back because Anvil had been destroyed. So HQ decided to call in a helicopter to extract us. Now, with that, though, the helicopter could only hold, of course, a certain amount of people at a time, which means we're going to have to do this in phases. Everybody right now is marching towards the extraction point where we're all going to make a perimeter, a rather large perimeter, so that way we can provide enough security around the helicopter when it lands. Now, with where I am, I'm looking towards the hill. And this hill is the same one that we had seen at the very beginning of the mission where a lot of enemy were. So there's a very strong chance that we're going to be seeing more enemy from here. I stay here from some time, not seeing anything at all and nobody else either. And it's not until we're about ready to get up and move ourselves that we start to see the enemy and are in one heavy firefight. We're moving southwest, LZ Bravo, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, I mean northwest. Form a wedge on me, guys, form a wedge on me, let's go. Movement on the tree line at 2.30, about 400 meters oh. out. We got movement on the tree line at 2.30, about 400 meters out. You guys got eyes on that almost contacts. I can see him, but they're ducking down under the ground. Roger that. I got eyes on them too. Just hold fire, hold fire for now, hold fire for now. Come on, guys, let's move. We're moving, we're moving. Never mind, we get, we're digging in. More coming too. 240. Engage, engage. Get him out of the point of Get him, use him. He's dead. 
down. Sounds good. Can't see any contacts. Anybody got eyes on that last guy that's shooting? Negative. More at 240, in the tree line. Yeah, yeah, shoot, shoot, shoot. Yeah, 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 I can't run right now. Alright okay, guys, we got a bird coming, so even if the, the uh, it starts to get hot, you still just hold here. Yeah, Snack Worth. What's up, Wentworth? You got over there. Uh, right in the tree line. I think I got him. You conserve your ammo. The order that was given. Got the shot, go ahead and take it though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He the man went worth. Yeah. Yeah, I think that guy's down now. For the hill. More contacts to the top of the hill. Important more contacts to the top of the hill. Yeah, there's a lot more contacts to the top of the hill, guys. You gotta be here about uh, 450 meters to the top of the hill. How you 
Save your ammo. Save your ammo. I'm down to two belts. What's up, dude? You see the uh, opening spot like right straight in front of us? Like I'll toss some tracers towards it. Okay. Yep. Uh, there's guys at the top right there. I'll okay. You in with, uh, my long range. Okay. I'm not seeing anybody. Next What's up? Bar. Move it west. We're gonna stay closer together. All right. Okay. God. Yeah, I can't give him those mags, bro. Fucking uh, break back off to the right. I took a bullet. I want you to guide fucking Joey's around when he fires. Wind work. Check your radio. I just called ID three times. They get responded. We got a guy. Somebody take my position. Uh, I'll take it. Uh, I'll take a bullet. Yeah, go ahead, step by. We got you in. Okay, yeah, I got you. Copy, Copy that. Good. One, one. All green. Yeah. Are all of your guys green? Negative. We have some wounded in our oh, We're good. We have one running over there, but. Copy that. Yeah, User joined, joined your channel. I'm sharp about the brain being close. I, I got some pain, but. Alright, this one three. Oh, User joined your channel. One, one's going to L. Halfway down the hill from where you're shooting. Everyone, you guys need to pick that casualty up and bring him to LZ Charlie to get on that bird. Along with the uh, team. Wrong net. Wrong net, wrong net. Thank you. Okay. The enemy's in the trees burying uh, 245. About 430 meters up. Uh, let's get some green smoke on that Who's hit? Pick up the one Wait, somebody's hit? I heard no, he he's 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 covering for 1-1. Alright, when the helicopter gets this guy, we're covering for 1-1. One, one. Left your channel. I was already going down. One one, are you guys fucking in position? I got bullets flying by my head.
Alright guys, I need you to lay down fire for suppressing. What's your status? Are you all green? Anybody down? Snackbar's green. I don't know why. All you have to hit is T. Well, if you switch from T to caps lock too quickly, it still transmits over the same one. You gotta let it stop transmitting. Just slow down. Just check your guys. Give me a radio check. I need a radio check. I don't know. Roger that. Uh, get an aisle to him. He's coming. You guys got any extra ammo? Nope. Only got two bags. I got a little one. bit. User got joined it. your channel. Three by five. Copy that. Just hold that there and get security at the base. Got five. We'll need the bags. Need one. McBride. User Good. left your channel. Hey, McBride. Yeah. Me too. I meant to try to access your backpack for some reason. Yo, you hear who's the guy that can't walk? I hear Disky. What? Uh, carry him. Okay. Johnson, where you at? Yeah, okay, I need you guys to pick Bid up. Bidvar is multiple hostiles coming in from shit. 270. Hey, 270. Ammo. Take my ammo. Oh. Oh, hang on, hang on. Get ready to pop. Hey, everybody get ready to pop some more white. I don't have white. I just got red and green. It doesn't just... It doesn't pop anything. Alright, we, we're gonna pop smoke here in a second, guys. Let's not let you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our, uh, west, our east, west side going to the north. User left your channel. Oh, my freaking legs. Alright, we got guys flanking us from uh, west to north, guys. Stop, crap. Now I got leg pains. I can't. Let's go, uh, unflank us. Alright, he's down. One time. Hey, we got a guy with binoculars. Guy with binoculars to our southwest. Shoot him, shoot him, shoot him, shoot him. Shoot him. He's gonna call mortars. Just let him go. Take him out. Take, we got guys right, to the southwest with binoculars. Take him out.
12 o'clock. It's about this time that I realize that we've got a significant problem. We don't have enough seats in the chopper for everybody who's on the ground. That means the chopper's gonna have to come back Cancel for the rest. Target. Now I'm thinking I should give up my seat. I don't know if there's just somebody who's wounded or if there's somebody who's more important who needs my seat. And as the helicopter takes off and I see that they're dragging somebody away, I feel terrible. I mean, the person who's wounded could get their medical attention a lot faster and it might be the difference between life and death. But the problem is, I just don't know the protocol on what to do in that situation where I'm willing to give up my seat. Do I just jump out and tell them? Do I ask permission from my fire team leader? It was too late at that point. Now I'm also worried about what they're going to be facing as far as what the enemy is going to throw at them. You guys saw when the first squad of the 183rd lifted out and my squad was left behind, the enemy threw everything that they had at us. We were being flanked from the right and they were getting a lot closer to us than we would have liked. And now those five, well four really if you take out the one person who's wounded, they're going to have to face everybody. But one thing that does bring me some comfort is knowing that FOB Jacket is not that far away from the landing zone. I mean, we're already here. And again, it comes to my mind. Do I jump out? Do I offer to stay in and help provide security for everybody who got left behind? I figured now was not a time to ask. Every moment mattered. So I ended up just jumping out of the chopper. I see that everybody else in the forward operating base is on the wall right now providing security. This would be a good time for the enemy to hit us as we are divided and we are somewhat confused. Our leadership I think is still back there and is on the ground. So I hurry to man my post and watch and see if the enemy does try anything. Now I'm waiting anxiously to see if there's any news about what happened with the chopper and I start to see that they're coming a little bit closer. Green smoke has been lit behind me, which is a really good sign, and it looks like everybody made it. So, I would say this has definitely been a successful mission. We killed a lot of enemy. Yes, we got bruised up pretty good, but the enemy is a lot worse off than we are. So, again, mission success. Thanks for watching, you guys. I sure do appreciate it. If you want to join the 183rd, you definitely can at 183rdairassault.net. There is a lot more of this to come, so make sure you guys subscribe if you haven't already. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, all that great jazz, but you guys are phenomenal people. You really are. Thanks again for watching. As always, I hope you have a good one.